Hello, my name is Johnny Hurricane and today I'm reporting a very special documentary for Jay Web Press News. Today I'm reporting from Bassey Power Station where I'll be talking about what was, what was once London's 20th century mechanicism, powering globally recognised landmark before shutting out in public for more than 30 years. So now it's reopening to the public, very, very around the it's right around the corner, reopening for the first time. So I will be talking about how this will be a good impact on the Nine Arms area. This is regenerating power to the 21st century. So Bassey Power Station was first commissioned in the 1930s where Station A was built during that time of the period before Station B didn't get built alongside with it until the 1950s. The, the station was, was designed and created by Sir, Gil, uh, Sir Gils Gilbert Scott who was a visionary genius architecture behind the likes of Waterloo Bridge, Tape, well, what was called um, Bankside Power Station before it turned it into Tate Morden Gallery, the Guildhall, the House of Commons in the Parliament, and the iconic classic red phone telephone boxes. So Gill's purpose of making Bassey Power Station was to create something so masterpiece that the chimney stood up very massively tall, which, which was, was once London's tallest, tallest landmark for 30 years, if you include the chimneys. The London Power Company that owned Bassey Power Station was one of the first, first super stations as part of the Lond London Power Company's proposal which they got the permission from the Parliament in the 1920s to create a publicly standard rather than relying on small companies widely differing standards. So during back then when Bassey Power Station was around many workers who, who lived around Nine Elms did work daily 24-7 in the hard core of the Bassett Passage and turbine engines, which back then were cold, dirty, and sometimes hard to resist the dirty work inside the chimneys and in the turbine engines. Which I thought, if I was there, I could have thought it would be hard life, like the Victorian times, but this was during the 20th century when they were just manufacturing and generating coal in the power station to generate electricity in the capital. Before Bassey Power Station was built, there were, there were some concerns and consequences over the smoke pollution would have affected the atmosphere of the capital. However, that, that problem was solved when, when, when inside the Bassey Power Station used the, the innovative washing technique to prevent toxic air pollution in the capital's atmosphere, which went out, went, turned out possibly good. Otherwise, we would have, you know, breathe in the pollution toxic air, which isn't good for our lungs. So, thanks to that technique, we're still alive. It would have carried on, you know, generating the electricity in the capital. Sadly, after 50 years of serving and generating the electricity in the capital, Bassey Power Station will cease to the public on the 31st of October 19, 1983, when the UK were already moving on from outdated coal generating electricity to cleaner technologies of generating oil, gas and nuclear power. Bassey Power Station was abandoned for more than 30 years. So despite being abandoned for more than 30 years, it still made a good impact in pop culture when, it, when Bassey Power Station appeared in art, film, music, fashion, and other festival celebrations. So, well, it may be recognized here, but does it well not? Let's find out in this book. So from art, like the powerful urban canvas, mm -hmm. which was really, very powerful urban, every, Every event took place outside Bassey Power Station, including Elton John over there. I'm still standing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had to cut that. No. Nope. All right. What else? So what else? There was the the um, 
the riot of color, the air around the Fantasy Power Station was filled with clouds of brightly colored powders with 15,000 renovators to celebrate the Holy One Festival in August 2013. And back then, there were snowboarding took place outside, and including the films, including the King's Speech, and TV shows like Doctor Who was filmed there, and especially the Dark Knight Trilogy was filmed Ding. inside the abandoned turbine terrier, using it for one of the sequent one of the se sequences mm. scenes for the Dark Knight to make a good entrance. If you're a fan of the Dark Knight, please let me know in the comments below. What was that? What was that part of the opening, middle, or end scene? And not only that, it appeared in the in the game too, including Grand Auto Theft. London and the video game called Colin McRae Drift Dirt 2, allowing players to go through its shells. And Ooh, also, this is interesting. And this one, it was held for the new era of performing arts. You can ignore that. And from, mm -hmm. and these are the very good examples of art still carries on. Visionary of different techniques of art to illustrate Barassi Power Station and even it was it was also the also was a good 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 part for fashion to they took place inside and became the backdrop of chic sculpt, sculpted silhouettes and fundamental Florences of the past. So even though it's still very visible if you see when you appear on the London Eye or on the chart. So now we're going to go on to the present day, how it's now shaping up of the phases. So in so one of these phases, we're going to look at many at three phases, not the all phases. So the first phase where we're standing right now is the Circus West Village. So just over there, we're going to go there soon. It was first opened for the first time ever in more than 30 years to the public. Circus West Village held at a celebration event, and after that, they got some pretty cool, cool things happening in this part here, including new transport links, the Santander cycle, and a new, new opening future pier stop for the riverboat services. And this part right here. Phase two, however, is the main attraction, the star of attention. We all know it's the Paris City Power Station, where it's rebuilding bit by bit. I did the videos doing. I did the videos during that time. <laughs> during that time between December 2016 to now, which it's showing that the chronological cha shape changing of chimneys going down, build, building bit by bit, and re repaint it something very classically cool that stands out more than old school with new school. So inside Battersea Power Station it's got to hold a lot of come over here <laughs> when it's got to hold massive companies in there including Apple and the US Embassy. Yes Apple is going to move its headquarters for European inside Battersea Power Station by 2021 which it will be a few years after the power station will open its doors to the public for the first time ever to see inside what something old is new. So, so that's two phases I, I explained. Now, let's, let's talk about phase three. What's phase three is actually about? So apart from buildings, the only one that's so special is the Northern Extension. The new station is coming here as part, as part of the, the Northern Island from Kennington by putting two new stations on it. That is to sit on Nine Elms and Bransley Town Station. So by the time it by the time it gets here, by the time the tunnel will be completed, the new North Carolina extension won't come won't be open to the public until December 2020. So that's all that's all three phases I explained. So the question is to myself as a resident as a resident who I live by Nine Elms for the last over 10 years. What will be the impact of the nine hours for those people who are generally coming into a Bersley Power Station? Well, because of new transport links, new flights, accommodations, businesses, shops, <laughs> new shops, and 
what basically new tourist people will come frequently by using all the facilities, including uh, new opportunities for jobs, new opportunities to come around, and family and transport will be useful rather than going to some mainline stations or tube stations around the corner. So that's so that's all I, I can uh, that's all I can say now. So the feature is nearly around the corner. Cannot wait to see the new Paris City Power Station one day in the future by the time we open to the public. So I'm Johnny Hogan, reporting for Jay Webber's News. This is regenerating regenerating power to the 21st century. Over and out.